Welcome back, boxing fans. So today we're going to be talking about Subrio Matias, who obviously has really built a name for himself in his last couple of fights, specifically his last fight, which got him a real big sort of uh, groundswell of attention and fans, specifically because of his exciting style of boxing, his aggressive come forward, seek and destroy type of uh, boxing skills which obviously gravitates or, or have gravit you know, casual fans gravitate towards him. People now want to see what he's able to do against the best and the highest level of potential opponents at 140 pounds. So this brings the question, who is going to fight him? We've seen guys like Devin Haney mention him. We've seen guys like Tia from Lopez mention him. The question is, who is finally going to step up and take on this challenge? Right now, the IBF mandated that Cottrell would fight Richardson Hitchens, and the winner of that would become his mandatory. Uh, and stylistically, that could be an interesting fight. Obviously, we've never seen Sabrina Matias in with a long, slick fighter like a Richardson Hitchens or a awkward, skilled fighter like Jack Cottrell, even though he looks like he'd probably be the easier of the two, uh, potentially. Now, of course, Cottrell has moved off and potentially is going to be seeking a rematch with Josh Taylor, which makes sense. It's a big UK fight, big money for both of them. Probably the smarter move uh, financially for him to move in that direction. So this brought in, of course, um, that other fighter. What's his name? I can't even remember. Uh, a guy who had a very big performance against uh, a, a fellow, another UK fighter, knocking him off and, and sort of solidifying himself as one of the top fighters at 140 pounds. Is he from Argentina? I think he's Argentinian fighter, if I'm not mistaken. Leave in the comment section if you know who I mean. But at, at one time, you know, he's a very strong puncher and, and had a very good performance against that um, once highly regarded UK fighter. And because of that, he was elevated pretty highly by the IBF. And now he is going to be the person that steps in line to fight Richardson Hitchens. And, and I think stylistically is probably pretty easy of a, an opponent for, for Richardson Hitchens. He's a much longer fighter. And I think he's going to be able to control the distance behind his jab with his better boxing skills. He's going to make it very difficult for that hard punching fighter to actually get into range and land something significant. But potentially it could be a good opportunity for Richardson Hitchens to show his toughness and to get chin checked, which are obviously things that he's going to have to prove to himself and to boxing fans overall uh, if we think he's going to have a very good opportunity to potentially beat Sabrio Matias, um, which stylistically I could see him doing. And, and that probably would be a little melodramatic because that's not really the kind of fight people have been hoping for. People have wanted to see him step up to face one of the more exciting fighters in boxing, but that may not be in the cards for him. You know, the whole adage about risk reward does come into effect when you talk about a guy like him. Uh, is the money big enough to take on a risk of fighting a guy who literally has killed somebody in the ring? That gives you a good sort of idea of what kind of punches and the brutality that he does bring to the ring. So maybe a upstart, a young fighter who, because of his slick style, is also high risk, low reward in a Richardson Hitchens, a guy that most fighters aren't going to be too eager to jump into the ring with because he is just a guy that can make them look bad, put them in a fight that's a little boring, not going to be a, a fight that's going to really build the guy's name up and build a big fan base fighting a guy like him. But for him, that might be the opportunity he needs to jump at somebody with uh, a growing reputation, beat him to become an IBF champion. And now the risk of fighting him becomes smaller because now, of course, there is something to actually gain by fighting a guy like him. So I could see it playing out like that. There's also... Uh, talk going on and I don't know the reality behind this but I wouldn't be sad if it was true about uh, Sabriel Matias facing Gary Russell that potentially could be an incredible fight 
a fight I probably would prefer to see over a guy like Richard Hitchens, just because a Gary Russell, another aggressive come forward boxer puncher in with Sabrina Matias, you know, Jesus, man, that's a fight that just can't fail to deliver. Somebody inevitably is going to get knocked out. The question is, who's able to land first? Who's tougher? Who's more resilient? Who's got the better chin? And that's really what that fight's going to determine. Um, so I do hope that's a fight that does happen. It was a fight that seemed likely because both of them at one time were uh, connected to the PBC. So it seemed like an obvious direction to move in. But then at the same time, I thought Gary Russell would have already been the WBA world champion by now. And things have not really worked out like that. So we're not sure exactly how things are going to move forward. But I would be excited if that is the fight that gets made. As far as fights against him and guys like Lopez and Haney, obviously those would be great fights. But the issue is, would you rather see one of those guys face him or would you rather see them face one another or possibly a Ryan Garcia? A Devin Haney versus a Lopez for unification is a huge fight. I mean, very, very big and very significant. Obviously, Haney or Lopez against Ryan Garcia is probably a bigger money fight, especially if Ryan Garcia does win that WBA title off Rolly Romero. But unfortunately, it seems like that fight is not going to happen, which is definitely disappointing because then a unification fight between Garcia and Haney or Garcia and Lopez would be a huge pay-per-view. And all those fighters would really sort of gain a lot from that kind of matchup but you know it's going to be interesting to see how things pan out this year at 135 and 140 pounds obviously these two divisions are deep and have some of the best young fighters in the sport but the question is which of these guys are actually going to get together and actually fight one another we know Lomachenko is going to go to Australia to fight Cambosis to get that vacated IBF 135 pound title. That's uh, fantastic. We also heard rumors that Navarrete potentially is going to move up to try to claim his fourth weight division. Uh, being the WBO champion at 130, he can get mandated as the WBO contender or you know put himself in a world title fight at 135. And that is something that has been talked about and does seem as if that is in the best interest of top rank and obviously, you know, their promotional company with both Shakur as a champion and Lomachenko as a champion. If you put him in the WBO as a champion, you'd have three of the four all under the top rank banner, which really sets up some good fights moving forward in 2024. At 140... <clears throat> obviously it's a, a little different situation. I mean, you have quite a few PBC fighters worth discussing. You have quite a few DAZN fighters, obviously Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, the main two. Uh, but you also have now Barbosa who joined Golden Boy, Ramirez who joined Golden Boy, who also both of them fight under DAZN. So whether it's Matchroom or Golden Boy, at least being under the same platform makes those fights far easier to make moving forward. Um, ESPN, who at one time controlled both 135 and 140, has lost some leverage, obviously, in both of those divisions, specifically at 140. But it's still full of a lot of very good potential opponents and good fighters in the division. So it's just a matter of seeing who can actually get it done. With all the money that we now see sort of gravitating towards boxing from Saudi Arabia, and obviously a lot of that is coming circa DAZN, whether it's through um, Queensberry or, or Matchroom, regardless, uh, you can see there's a lot of opportunity for fighters moving forward. And, and obviously we know that they've already talked about making Devin Haney fight over in Saudi Arabia, and he's been very excited about the possibility you know, Lopez would be keen because he's looking for any opportunity to make big money. For Ryan Garcia, similarly, uh, obviously for him, that would be a big opportunity. A guy like Sabrina Matias 
would jump at the chance to get paid big cash to fight somebody over in Saudi Arabia. So <clears throat> the possibilities are endless. It's just a matter of people putting the money on the table and having an interest in making some of these fights. The fight that obviously the majority of us have been looking forward to is a Devin Haney Tank Davis fight. Um, but that fight seems to be going round in circles and round in circles. Even with the possibility of getting financed by the Saudi Arabians, Tank Davis has kind of poo pooed the whole idea, uh, thrown out some sort of stupid uh, statements about, you know, I want to see two Ferraris in front of my house if you want me to start negotiating and talking about fighting in Saudi Arabia. This is a guy who literally just became a Muslim. <laughs> he, you know, think about how that sort of works out together. This guy just became a Muslim. He has a chance to go over to really the uh, the homeland uh, and also get super rich in the process, but shows little to no interest at all in doing that. I mean, maybe with his prison record, it's not as easy as, as said, but, you know, these are all things that we have to consider moving forward. Obviously, we are looking for the biggest and baddest and best fights in boxing, regardless of what platform or whoever puts them on. Um, obviously, there's been rumors about Isaac Cruz fighting Rolly Romero. It's not a bad fight. It'd be an intriguing fight. Hopefully, it's not pay-per-view because it's not that interesting of a fight. But it's, like I said, a little disappointing that obviously Rolly is not going to be fighting Ryan Garcia. That was a fight that made the most sense. And it was just going to obviously build towards bigger and better things moving into the year. But let me know what you think. Who do you think is going to step up and take on this monster, this beast, this behemoth, Sabriel Matias? He is a bad, bad man. And I think anyone that steps up and shows the nerve to actually get in front of him is showing a lot of heart and tons of balls. And it's not that he can't be beat. He definitely can be. And I see guys like Richard Hitchens or Devin Haney having the perfect style to potentially beat him by controlling distance and range behind their jab with good foot movement and basically frustrating him and easily winning a unanimous decision, which may not make uh, boxing fans happy with the results so uninteresting. But that's what happens in boxing. Styles do make fights. Uh, that's why, as I said, I'd be super excited to see him against Gary Russell. Stylistic, I think that fight makes way more sense and potentially is a far more intriguing fight. But regardless of what happens, I'm just curious to see who is actually going to step up, make the fight, sign the contract, put their name on the dotted line, and give us boxing fans what we've been hoping for, to see Matias step up to face a legitimate top opponent at 140 pounds uh tell me in the comment section below who would you prefer to see him in against and uh what do you think the chances of that actually happening are thanks for watching see you next time enjoy your upcoming weekend peace out everybody remember this weekend we have a big fight Jaime Munguia versus John Ryder that fight is going to deliver we've already had two fights of the year contenders Obviously, this um, Ken Shiro fight with Carlos Canzanales that just happened, the fight last weekend, uh, you know, it's how quick, you know, things happen. I can't even remember who fought. And now Jaime Munguia versus John Ryder. This could easily be the best of the three and potentially the fight of the year. But uh, yeah, we'll be talking about that on Sunday. So make sure you jump on my live uh, and we will chop it up and discuss the results and what's going to happen moving forward in 2024 for the winner, the loser, and other people in and around that weight division. But thanks for watching. Peace out. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. Uh, yes, I'm just trying to break that 100 sub mark. It would be nice to be able to get to that 1,000 sub mark in a month. I don't know the possibility of that, but cross my fingers and we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. Peace out.